What's up guys, welcome to Etsy Print On Demand Shop Reviews episode 32. We got a banger of an episode. We're gonna be reviewing a shop called Moonlight Design USA with over 24,000 sales. So we're gonna be reviewing one of the more established Etsy shops and there's gonna be some good takeaways, I'm sure. I haven't really done too much of an audit ahead of time. But anytime you see, you know, 20,000 or more sales, <laughs> that's, you know, these guys know what they're doing. So we're all gonna be learning from this shop today and let's get started quick reminder take advantage of the free weekly print on demand giveaway two winners are going to be randomly selected and announced tomorrow and they're going to receive a license to flying research print on demand research tools automate pod print on demand design creation automation all american graphics premium pre-made graphics and bubble scout the only red bubble niche research and validation tool the link is at the top of the description also down there I've got an eight-day print-on-demand mini course that'll walk you through how to start your Etsy print-on-demand business completely free. Just need your email to send you one lesson a day. And I've got a great print-on-demand Facebook community if you'd like to join. All right, let's get started with this shop review. All right, here we are at the Etsy shop. I will also drop a link to it in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. So they have a cool sliding uh, banner at the top of the shop. They've got a matching profile image. Love that says from Houston, Texas. Of course, we don't know where they're actually from and it's probably print on demand. So they're probably farming this work out. 24,422 sales. They are killing it. Featured items. Check that out. The first item that they see uh, or that they list is Disney. That is interesting. Uh, for what it's worth, guys, like I got kicked off Etsy because of being on the receiving end of reports, not even necessarily that I did anything wrong. I will admit like probably like two of my listings were not direct infringing on anything, but um, tweaking of some popular logos that I shouldn't have done and paid the price for it. But then you've got shops like this, 24,000 sales later, they are still allowed to infringe on Disney um, unless they've got the rights somehow to sell Disney products on Etsy, which seems highly unlikely, wouldn't you agree? Um, you know, again, though, we're also just guessing here. It could be legit. Um, just not, not likely. Right. Uh, especially with the shop name Moonlight Design USA, right? Like they don't seem like they're affiliated with Disney. Um, they are doing the loss leader where you, you know, put some variation of size and color and have a really low priced product. So at the, and the front facing part, you see a $10.32 price tag. But then what you realize when you click and you say, oh, well, I'm a, uh, large, size black all of a sudden my price goes up to sixteen dollars and 72 cents plus i'm sure there is a uh, shipping tacked on as well so they're probably doing quite well with their uh, their business right now um so yeah the first thing i'd say though is looks like they're selling some disney uh another way you would probably guess that they're not authorized to sell disney is check out the where do they go i wanted to show the princess security the aunt, uncle, mommy, daddy. How is this possible? And check this out. This is pretty much all the confirmation we're going to need that these guys do not have the rights to sell Disney because they are cross niching. <laughs> this is the ultimate uh, taken out of context. When we talk about sub niching and cross niching specifically in print on demand, they have cross niched or cross branded Disney with Gucci. So they got the fake Disney with the fake Gucci. Um, and somehow they're still allowed to sell on Etsy. Um, it's kind of blowing my mind that like someone like me gets removed from Etsy for doing really nothing wrong. And these people are, you know, 24,000 sales deep, uh, just finding a million different ways to infringe on these big brands. Um, let's keep exploring their shop. I was hoping this would be more informative. I mean, it does look like they at least understand the Etsy best practices. They got the, you know, the, the thumbnails look great. Um, the pricing's good. The 20% off sale all looks really good. They're using sections here. You can see on their shop, they have Valentine's day shirts, vacation shirts, 50th anniversary. Let's click that. Okay. 50th anniversary and mixed in here. We're still seeing a lot of, uh, you know, just straight up. Okay. So is this just a Disney shop? I mean, this is just a straight up, like I ripped off Disney shop and that's all they do here. Um, not what I expected when I started this review. Uh, but you know what, we're going to keep it because I'm not going to self-censor due to, you know, them infringing. This is really an example though, of what not to do when you start your print on demand business. Um, I can't believe they're still around. This is like blowing my mind. So it seems like all of these other like pandemic shirts, are we going to get a Disney pandemic now? Okay. No, now they're mixing in, um, things related to, um, 
the companies that produce the injection pandemic shirts family t-shirts okay so they have all the generic uh, family shirts as well like the mama bear shirt um, that i'm sure we've all seen kind of a year-round bestseller they probably realized quickly that um you know selling shirts that they actually have the rights to sell is not the quick way to fast cash fast uh, profits then they realize that hey if i just add a disney logo or disney font that it will sell quite a bit better this is the shirt that i wanted to show that i thought to myself if they do have the right to use disney you know you'd probably see it in the logos that they use but when you start seeing like the disney font being used in creative ways then that's how you typically know that they are not affiliated and this was the one that put it on my radar right here it says princess in the disney font and then security with some glasses uh, so they're making basically all of their money on uh, people that are going to go to disneyland and they're just like buying t-shirts and whatnot for the um for the trip the data lorian man they they're hitting all the the intellectual property across the board that's crazy uh, so yeah, so I mean, not every big six me mega successful Etsy shop is doing it this way. I, this is definitely the wrong way. It's not the long-term success way by any stretch. Um, but you know, there's also going to be, of course, quite a few shops that just kind of do this. I had somebody one day message me on Facebook, their Etsy shop, and it was just like all major, well, major league sports, like, you know, baseball, NFL, etc., branded gear. <laughs> and I think they like within two months of launching their shop had like thousands of orders, like 2000 orders or something in like two months. And the next time I checked their shop, it had just disappeared from the platform. So, you know, quick cash grab. And I don't even know if Etsy paid them out because you know, you do get paid out on a, uh, on a delay. So you definitely want to keep that long-term perspective. Yeah. So they've got some of these shirts. This just looks straight up stolen from this looks straight up stolen from, um, that one design on merch by Amazon. You know, I've definitely seen that before. I'm pretty sure it's from Merch by Amazon. Yeah, so this is uh, not a good person. They're doing the the Pog Life stuff. We know that those are um, protected intellectual property as well. Uh, they got Christmas shirts, inspirational T-shirts. I mean, as far as like the best practices though go, uh, the designs are great. The pricing is great. The sales are great. Um, the niche selection is great. However, they're in a lot of niches they shouldn't be in. Um, thumbnails looking great. So as far as like what we can learn from, yeah, they're checking all these boxes. They include the sizing chart. They include, you know, pictures of the sizing very or the color variations for mega successful listings. I would also recommend like add a video component too. you know, for your best sellers, you can go to place it and you can create those video mockups. But guys, um, beyond that, you know, what can we really take away from this? I think this shop is going to be gone before we know it. It won't be on Etsy forever. Just given that this doesn't seem, you know what I mean? Am I the only one that thinks that the shop has an expiration date on it, that it's not going to be around forever? Um, especially cause like we've definitely seen these designs listed on merch by Amazon as well. So it looks like they're probably just straight up ripping off these designs from various merch by Amazon sellers as well. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Etsy print on demand shop reviews. If you would like to learn the correct way of being successful on Etsy and building a long-term business, of course, you can also learn from my mistake. Like I mentioned, uh, one of my shops was removed from the platform. So of course, you know, I'm going to be completely transparent about how to avoid that from happening because there are lessons learned along the way, learn from my mistakes. So you don't have to replicate it, uh, but also all of the best practices that'll help you be successful. You can find out more using the link in the description to my Etsy print on demand full course, which covers how to execute every optimization that there is for Etsy. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the next one.